Hi everybody, uh, my name is Matt Sowerby and I am Church Action on Poverty's Digital Poet in Residence. If you're not sure what that means, then I explain it at the start of the last two videos that I uploaded, so go have a look. I'm not going to explain it again, I'm just going to perform another poem for you today. This is a poem that I don't normally perform, so I'm reading it off of a couple of pieces of paper, but it's one that I wrote in collaboration with the Darwin Gets Hangry campaign. Now the Darwin Gets Hangry campaign is a group of young people um, living in food poverty that are protesting against it while supported by Church Action on Poverty in the Darwin area. So this is their stories written by me, usually for them to perform. Um, and I hope you enjoy it. Fact. Food insecurity affects upwards of 10.1% of people in this country. That means on your street, in your village, in your community, there are people left to go hungry. However, they're saying that these days no one listens to figures, so to paint you the bigger picture, 10.1% includes those dipping into bins for dinner, come home stinking with fish and chips looking chipper, kids missing meals looking thinner but insisting different, and men in suits in food banks licking juice from their fingers. 10.1% includes the parents who increasingly are too hungry to sleep, spend their days fatigued, feeling physically weak, numbing their stomachs with water. At least that's free. And at least their suffering allows their children to eat. And the girl, the young carer who was never taught to cook or prepare food, and it's fine. Her brothers can get free meals at school, so maybe they'll make do till school stops for summer. And after that, they can ration. Wrap up the last bits of lunchtime sandwiches for supper, six sunny weeks of hunger. And her friends balancing two jobs alongside full-time education, but between empty kitchen days and slipping grades, there's no kit-taking or relaxation, no vacations or playstations. She's running on fear of running out of the basics, running off the tears and covering her face. It's amazing what she can do. And what she's done. Supporting her siblings and mum since year 11 when she came undone. These are true stories. And they're not easy to hear. But the reason we're telling them is because they say that these days no one listens to facts. See, they're immune to them like they've had the vaccine to, so, to combat that we are taking a stand against catastrophe. Getting hangry. We, the kids who dragged ourselves through dark days and empty stomachs. Who made sure to get every last grain of rice who learn the hard way to appreciate what we had and are fighting to cause change so no one else has to. Because the fastest way to change society is to change the way people think. And these stories hold power. If we're going to stop poverty, we're going to have to be loud. So if there is a story inside of you waiting to come out, listen to that sound. Come find us. Get angry. And speak out. So I hope you enjoyed that. Um, one of the projects that Church Action on Poverty and the On the Fringes project has going on is we are collecting stories from around the country given the massive rise in food poverty brought about the coronavirus pandemic and turning that those stories into poetry. So if you've got a story which relates to coronavirus or relates to food poverty that you think might have some power to it, then please do get in touch um, and we can maybe work on turning that into something creative that can raise awareness for food poverty and maybe bring about some actual change. So yeah, please do get in touch. My contact information is below and I'll see you next time. Cheers.